Hello and welcome to the episode 349 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. In this episode, we'll touch upon a meeting about the future of the Beatles, more work on Strawberry Fields Forever, and a memorable concert for peace in 1969. Let's start with a meeting happened on the 15th of December 1960. It was on this date that Pete Best, George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney met again for the first time after returning to Liverpool from Hamburg. George and Paul weren't particularly impressed with the fact that John had returned on the 10th, see episode 344, but had decided to stay put, resting and thinking about his future and that of the band. Paul McCartney, in particular, had been forced to take up a job at a coil winding factory when it was evident that the band's future might be in jeopardy. With Sutcliffe in Hamburg, the four remaining Beatles decided to find a new bass player and then keep busy with local engagements. Through Pete Best, the band managed to acquire the services of a Chaz newbie, albeit for a short time. Chaz was on holiday from college and had to leave in January. Like Paul McCartney, Newby was left-handed. He had seen the band playing live in April 1960 and actually played with Pete Best in the Black Jacks, the band Pete was drumming for before joining the Beatles, but he was shocked at the improvement of their playing, Pete's included. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass and Pete Best still on drums, started their working day with a lunchtime concert at a cavern club in Liverpool. At night, there was another five-and-a-half-hour rock and roll marathon at the Tower Barroom in Wallace, organized as usual by Sam Leach. For the occasion, the Beatles shared the bill with another four bands. The night was memorable because of a one-night-only reunion of Brian Kassar and his former band, now called the Big Three, under their old name of Cass and the Casanovas. Another live engagement in 1962, with the Beatles performing twice in the same evening at the Majestic Barroom in Birkenhead. The first was a quote-unquote regular gig, while the second appearance was a spot on the first Mercy Beats Paul Awards show, starting at the same venue just after midnight. The Beatles, winning the poll for the second year in a row, performed their spot at 4 a.m. The band had now acquired its definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums. On the 15th of December 1963, the Beatles were at the Alpha Television Studio in Birmingham, where they took part to another episode of ABC Television's Thank Your Lucky Stars the second one dedicated to the Mercy Beat phenomenon. All the acts hailed from Liverpool and, actually, the show also featured Cavern Club's compare and DJ Bob Wooler during the spin -a disc record review section. The Beatles, now at their eighth appearance on the show in one year, mimed the performance of I Want to Hold Your Hand, All My Loving, Twist and Shout and She Loves You. The show was broadcast on the 21st of December between 5.50 and 6.35 pm. Let's add a caesura between the performing days of the Beatles and the rest of their career. What better occasion to remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can show me some love? Any donation is welcomed, but you can also give me a huge hand telling me what you like about this podcast, writing a positive review about it, or sharing it on your social media. Let's grow this community of music lovers together. Thank you! On the 15th of December 1966, there was more work on Strawberry Fields Forever at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Between 2.30 pm and midnight, the track was enriched by the sound of four trumpets, played by Tony Fisher, Greg Bowen, Derek Watkins and Stanley Roderick, and three cellos, courtesy of John Hall, Derek Simpson and Norman Jones, 
with a score prepared by producer George Martin. Take 25 was reduced into Take 26, and onto this, John Lennon recorded two separate vocals, liking the effect of real double tracking better than that of ADT, at least for this song. George Harrison also played Swar Mandal on the track. The session was wrapped up with the production of a rough mono mix of the piece. Let's close the episode with a host of events happened on this date in 1969. For a start, engineer Glyn Jones began working on a new version of Get Back, incorporating the comments the Beatles had made on his previous work and keeping an eye on the Get Back film slash documentary that was being produced, so that the album could tie in with the film. Jones worked at the Olympic Sound Studios between 1 and 2.30 pm today, remixing the album. At the same time, in his Apple Core office, Ringo Starr recorded an appeal for the British Wireless for the Blind Fund to be broadcast on Christmas Day by the BBC. Also on this day, the War is Over poster campaign from John Lennon and Yoko Ono was launched. It was another incarnation of the couple's peace campaign, with huge white posters bearing the writing War is Over, if you want it. Happy Christmas from John and Yoko, appearing in 12 cities around the world – Amsterdam, Athens, Berlin, Helsinki, Hong Kong, London, Los Angeles, New York, Rome, Paris, Tokyo and Toronto. London had the distinction of being the only city where the posters were defaced. Finally, in the evening, EMI recorded the entire Peace for Christmas UNICEF Benefit concert at the Lyceum Ballroom in London, featuring, among the others, the Hot Chocolate Band, the Pioneers, the Young Rascals, Jimmy Cliff, Black Velvet and, finally, a version of the Plastic Ono Band featuring John Lennon, Yoko Ono, George Harrison, Eric Clapton, Klaus Foreman, Bobby Keys, Billy Preston, Keith Moon, Alan White, Jim Gordon and Lenny and Bonnie. It was the first time two Beatles appeared together on a stage since the 1st of May 1966. They performed Cold Turkey for nearly seven minutes. Then, Yoko came out of her white bag and began her performance of Don't Worry Kyoko. Allegedly, George Harrison walked off the stage a couple of minutes into this latter 40-minute performance, later edited down to 15 minutes for album release. This music marathon is the last curiosity on this episode. There will be more Beatles storytelling tomorrow if you fancy joining me. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.